So, Mark here from Rock and Load this evening. I am joined by the one, the only, Mr. Doug Aldrich. Doug has been wheeling his six string with many's a band over the years, uh, with White Snake and Dio, for example, but at the moment is plying his trade with the dead daisies. The guys have just released a beautiful album, Radiance, back at the end of September, and hit the UK at the start of December, kicking off December 3rd, Nottingham Rock City, with FM and the Graham Bonnet Band. Make sure you do check out ticketmaster.co.uk for availability of tickets and ticketmaster.ie for the Irish dates. Doug, how are you doing, brother? Good, Mark. Thanks for having me on. It's really nice to talk to you. It's an absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure. So, look, first and foremost, congratulations on an absolutely stunning new album. I was listening to it today just to uh, get myself psyched up for the interview, and it really is a beautiful album from start to finish. Well, thank you so much. It's um, it was uh, I'm re- we're really happy with it. Basically, we're, it was it was a, a lot of work put yeah. together really quickly, but it turned out great. You know, I I feel I feel good about it. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I have to say now, um, I hope it doesn't uh, irritate anybody in any shape or form, but you can definitely hear Glenn Hughes' DNA all over that album. It's uh, very oh, reminiscent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got, he, he brought in a couple of heavy, good, really cool riffs. And, um, and we just, you know, basically tried to put our stamp on everything. Everybody did. But yeah, when Glenn's, you know, the lead singer, of course, his DNA yeah. is probably the most important part. Yeah, it's um, it's reminiscent of this like the Black Country Communion sort of vibe that you'd get with the Bonamassa, you know, some of those sort of groove, um, bass grooves that he he does is just so his signature sound. But what's it like yeah, then when yeah, somebody yeah. when when somebody comes into a band and a project which is already established? I'm sh- I'm sure they sort of inject a new energy into it. Yeah, you know, I think that uh, it's I, of course Glenn is. Uh, he's an amazing bass player and obviously we, we all know how he's a, a great singer. I think that um, the chemistry that we have together is really cool. It's something for me, it's, it's, it doesn't, you know, it's something different for Glenn when he yeah. works with, with a band situation. Um, Cause he's used to being a solo artist. Yeah. So when he came in, it was, um, we, we, he started in 2019 and we made it the, the last album, Holy Ground. And I, I kind of noticed that, like, I, I really like Holy Ground a lot. And there was some great stuff there. And we collaborated. I brought in some stuff for Glenn that was, like, you know, heavy groove that I knew that he would like. And I think he, you know, he, we were all being polite to each other. It was the first time we were re- really writing together. And on this album, Glenn brought some stuff. I brought some stuff. David, had, David and I brought some stuff. And we were basically, not that it was, uh, no, it wasn't tension. But it was like we were more honest with 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 each other. Yeah. So we we basically I feel like we we gelled even more on this album and um and uh, Glenn you know his lyrics are are just really really cool you know we David and I for example David and I brought a song in um, called Born to Fly that, that was just meant to be you know the management asked us to have a couple of things that were on the little bit more commercial side yeah so we brought that in and and said you know this is this is what we were thinking and glenn was happy to sing it like that and put his stamp on it but then he took the lyrics and instead of being literally about born to fly he makes it about human condition which is like that your soul is born to fly everybody's soul is born to fly so that that's how you get with glenn he brings in a deeper aspect on everything yeah, for sure. And I, I've spoke to Glenn um, a few times over the years, and he describes himself as a, a vocal athlete. And he, he fairly sort of shows that on the album itself. Like he, he has such a range, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, I think he, on the album, he's singing for the song. You know, it's, he's singing what, what he feels is good for the song. I don't think yeah. he's really trying to, he, I think he's he live is more is is more that he's going going more to the athletics part of it because he'll go off and he'll start just going hitting yeah. high notes that only only dogs can hear. <laughs> yeah, I'm but sorry. Uh, but you know he, he he's a uh, he's a, he's a he's like a a treasure to rock and roll. You know, basically, is a guy like that that's been around so long, done so much, and may, most of the stuff he's done has been bought on his own by himself. Um, and it's just, you know, he just is a really beautiful person inside and out and, uh, brings it on this album. 
Yeah. And so for yourself as a musician, it must be an absolute pleasure then to work with um, such quality musicians uh, in a band like the Dead Dizzies. Obviously, you've worked in Whitesnake before and Dio, and you've worked with some really stellar musicians over the years. Um, so it must be a real joy when you guys get together in a room and start creating music. It must The sparks must fly pretty instantly. Yeah, like I said, you know, if, if we, we have great chemistry. I mean, this is stuff that but when, when Glenn and I got together early on for this album, we, we basically, he had a couple of things that uh, he had, like you were talking about the, the riffs that Glenn would bring. He brought in um, Radiance and the riff was just brutal. It was like yeah, it's an early track. really, really, really killer. Um, and we, we didn't really, uh, like when we, when we got to um, getting in the studio, working on it, we, 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 we were, I tried to be honest and say, listen, I, this is what I hear. This is when I hear this song. I, I feel like it's a killer riff. It's amazing. Very Glenn. But then when it gets to the chorus, it's, it, it didn't, it kind of left me a little bit flat. And I was just, not that it was bad, but so graciously Glenn said, well, what do you got? You know? And I, I, presented him a different chorus direction and it turned out to be the first single. So it's like, I feel like it's a the chemistry between us is, is really special. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. And as you said yourself, then it's about being, being able to be honest and, and address that with Glenn and feel confident enough to provide something, a solution that uh, makes a strong, strong uh, song better. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, it's the thing is, is, is as, uh, Glenn is, he's very, he's a very sensitive person and he gets very, gets very connected with, with things musically and it's difficult to let go sometimes, you know? So I want to just be supportive of that, but also, you know, be, I can't, you know, I love the guy. I'm not going to just say yes, that if, if I think something can be better, we want it to be better. But, uh, speaking of the musicians in the Dead Daisies, we got Brian Tishy back, and Brian Tishy is definitely a huge part of all these songs, making them happen. He's always got great ideas. He put his stamp on every one of these songs and made it better. Same with David. David's got a very simplistic, honest approach to guitar that is is unique. You know, it sounds like him. Yeah. So the, the mix of the four of us is, is what you're hearing, and that's uh, that's the way it should be, really. Yeah, and do, you, do yourself and David um, swap solos on the albums or just yourself doing the lead work? For the most part, it's me. There's a couple spots where David does gets a, a little feature here and there, but um, for the most part, it's he's more he's he's happy to hold down the fort with his monstrous, you know, we call him the thunder from down under because it's... <laughs> He's from Australia and his guitar sound is, is just fat. Yeah. And out of curiosity then, Doug, at what point do you start thinking about guitar solos? Is, is it when the songs have been written and completed or are, is it always in the back of your mind throughout the process? No, it's, it's, it's after the, after, uh, basically I can't really do a solo until I hear where Glenn's going with the, or with, with any singer. Like yeah. you, you, it sound, it'll sound disjointed if, if the, like you just go by the music and what if, if you don't hear in the melody and I can't really, I mean, I, of course I, I, I do it lots of times where I would play a solo on something and, and sometimes it works out and sometimes you go, you know, now that I hear the vocal, I would like to change that. And that's, that's, but so if I had my way, I, I'd like to have a vocal on there. There was a couple of songs on this album that I took, I changed the solo after I heard the vocal cause it didn't make sense. Yeah, you know, yeah. when, once you hear the, the vocals taking you somewhere and it, it or musically, it, you know, it's, it's something's happening. And then you want to basically have it take over and keep keep the vibe unless you've arranged the song to where the solo section is supposed to be a craziness, you know, a crazy moment or something. Then you can do whatever you want. But for like the title track, I always heard something really when it goes from. Uh, from full time of this heavy riff to a half time kind of verse section, I just felt like, okay, it wants to be melodic. It doesn't want to be just to rip your head off. The whole track is coming down. So it felt like, you know, that's why I started with a slide melody and yeah. it just seemed to fit, fit better. But yeah, definitely. I like the vocal first. 
Yeah. And what about the studio experience? Is that something that you enjoy still? Or do is it if some people have a funny relationship with the, the recording process? I lo- I love it. I love the whole creative aspect. You know, it's just it's it's so fun for me. And so Glenn and I got um together in 2020 and started doing some demos of some things and um about half of those songs ended up making on the album some of that stuff was it, it was uh just a little more of, it felt like more of a glenn solo type of vibe so we we, we cherry picked those and we wrote some others but we made these demos that were just kick ass and glenn really loved it he was like got you know as i said he got very attached to that sound so when we got in the studio with the producer the producer's like we're gonna try this we're gonna try that and i started to get really excited like oh cool i can't wait to see where it's gonna go you know and and i could see glenn getting (laughs) like he was getting upset like a little bit you know like oh no don't change it because i you know he's he he likes that kind of real um amp tone for example and he would come to me and say, how did you get that? How did you get that sound on the demo? I said, well, just, I did a bit of this and did that. He goes, could you please talk to Ben about seeing if we could get closer to what we had on the demo? So I did, of course I did. I, you know, told him that this is kind of what Glenn was hoping for. It's a little bit more like the demo and, and the producer, of course he's going to respect that. So we went with it, but the demos, is uh is i love it it's a great place to start but i get really excited going to the studio seeing where it's going to go in the end yeah it must be an, an amazing thing going from obviously an idea and right through to the finished product and and seeing that they're giving birth really and obviously it can just go in so many different directions especially with post-production as well bigger and, and better than you could ever imagine yeah and some stuff you know i mean it's like when, when we get the mixes we sometimes we're like oh well, he's doing it like that. He's mixing it like that. But I, I personally, you know, I get it. The producer is like the fifth member of the band. He's going to have a say in how the sound is. He doesn't want it to sound like, um, you know, Ben Gross has got a sound of his own as as well as David Lowy or Glenn Hughes or Brian Tisch. Yeah. So we're, we're working together, really. Yeah. And tell me a little bit about yourself and your, your own sound and your guitar. So I, I watched a wee guitar clinic you were doing, I think it was actually way back in 2013. But yeah, every every time I, I watch you sort of, at any sort of situation where you're talking about your guitar tone, it always seems to be more of an edge of breakup sound, a sort of Marshall Plexi edge of breakup. Is that what you're still working with today? Yeah, I, I mean, that's um, probably... At that time, I had a little more gain than I do now. Now I'm definitely trying to get more of the so you can hear the fingers type of thing. For yeah. the Dead Daisies, it's it's more simple rock, and uh, and then sometimes it's it's you know a simple riff, but it's it's really heavy. So it, it's but to to be honest, I really. I, I just play when I, when I'm working with Ben Gross, he's really in charge of the sound. You know, I, I just play, he might ask me, Hey, can we try a different app or, or uh, what, you know, he might ask me, what are you hearing initially on this? And I'll tell him, but then he might have a better idea or he might say, Hey, can you try playing that riff with this other, other sound? And he's, he's with, with these two albums that I've worked with Ben on, he's really been uh, an equal part of the sound of the guitar sound. Yeah. I suppose these guys are almost like artists working with colors and paints. Uh, they they can see these things that and hear these things that um, without before you've even put it into practice. I suppose they can hear those layers on top of each other. Yeah, and he's all he's all about like the top line. Like if there's a melody on top, whether it's a vocal or a, a guitar solo or a guitar overdub, he's really into that stuff. Like he, it, like there was um, hypnotize yourself is a very simple riff. And the song, you know, is, is going on. And he's saying, we got to put a top line. And I'm like, what, where? What are you talking about? He goes, mm-hmm. well, the top line of the, the, the chorus. I said, well, Glenn's singing on the chorus. And he goes, oh, well, can we try this? And I, I said, I'm sure we can try it. No problem. So we try it. He's like, no, not that. Let's try this. And he gave me another idea. And we tried it. And then he finally said, you know what? I don't think it needs a top line. So <laughs> it's a matter of just, you know, trying it out and seeing what happens. But. Um, 
Yeah, he's 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 like a director when he's like a movie director. He's got a shot list that he wants yeah. to capture. He's got it in his it's between his ears and, and the sound that's in his head. So he would call and say, "Can you come in and just give me a couple hours on Thursday, for example?" And you know, I'm going to get Glenn in and sing a little bit on in the morning. Come in the afternoon about one, and then he'd have a list like, "Let's go to the chorus of Cascade. Let's let's add a guitar here, or let's." You know what I mean? He's just have a I, bunch of stuff he wanted to get. And then in the mix, he may or may not use it. Yeah, yeah. And what what are those sessions like then, say, when you go in to record? Are they hard work? Like, do you come out feeling drained after a day's worth of, of giving your all? Um, when the, the hardest, longest days are when we're tracking, when we're tracking this, the, the drums and, the, and the, the basic tracks. And the basic tracks on this album didn't include keeping guitar parts. Actually, there, there might be a few parts where we kept guitar parts. But for the most part, Glenn would, would then, we'd track together as a band, recording everything so we could hear it back and get an idea if we're getting the song right or not, if it's doing what we want it to do, if the tempo's right. So these were long days where, you, you know, you maybe get one or two songs a day. Right. And uh, we, but we'd be playing all day long. And then once we got the track, once we got the drum track we were set on, then Glenn would go back and repair his bass, punch in and fix the spots where he needed to fix. And then he's done with the, with the music. Then we would come, we'd listen to the guitars as reference, but we ended up replacing them because we would you, you know, utilize different sounds or whatever. And then Glenn would sing. But the tracking days were the longest days. And that's also... Uh, the most stressful too for because you know we're 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 topping off the songwriting on the song before we actually record it and trying different things and there were certain things that Ben wanted to um, to try some, some you know some arrangement changes and stuff and as a songwriter you go like oh come on that's my favorite part you know yeah, <laughs> he's like yeah. I the song doesn't need it and it's like okay well let's try it you know and then. And then you, you end up going, I see, he's, he's right, you know, yeah. the song didn't need that part. It's like, it's like you say, though, uh, you get attached to these things, and it must be hard letting go of certain things, whether it be a melody, a riff, or a vocal line, or whatever, because you do get attached. You spent probably so long with these songs before recording, and then all of a sudden, yeah, somebody says, tweak. <laughs> yeah, 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 it, it's, it, it's interesting. And not every producer does that. You know, some producers just go, look, I'm going to record you guys, you've this song is approved and let's let's record it but ben really gets likes to get involved and i think that the thing you know the changes that he would make as a producer are all in all good changes yeah, so yeah the ones that, that get attached to stuff is, is glenn and myself but <laughs> yeah. i i just basically i just know from experience i and i like to be pleasantly surprised trying something you know i when I was um, when I was younger, recording in the studio was a situation where I I was like I know what I want and I'm not I'm not doing anything else than that. I'm going to stick to my guns and, and do that and that's it. And I probably wasn't you know was like young and young dumb and full of calm or whatever they yeah. say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah. But you you miss out on on learning something and trying something that maybe is like you'll go wow this is so now I'm much more open to it. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I'd, I'd say, it, as I said earlier, it must be quite the experience seeing these songs blossom and bloom in front of you. And by the time you get to that sort of final master, it must be a totally different experience than the original idea. And it, it has evolved so much. It'd just be a beautiful thing. Do you have any favorite yeah, tracks yeah. yourself on the album? Well, I, I, I love them all, really. They're, I mean, I tried my best to make them all be as good as they could and brian played amazing on the foundation of everything that made it fun to, to record with him and um I, I would say if i had to pick a couple if i could pick a couple i would say um hypnotize yourself i really love i love uh shine on and then they're all kiss the sun is actually one of my favorite songs it's a you know simple heavy groove yeah. something that um that we thought Glenn would, would really dig into and so it turned out cool. And have you given any thought yet to the tour and which songs you're going to take onto the stage live? We are, we've already worked up, because uh, we, we've been touring all year. So yeah. we've been playing 
as singles came out, we've been playing, adding them. So we're, we've already, the first single was Radiance. We've been playing that. It was, goes over. It's better live than it is on the album, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then um, Shine On was the second single. We started playing that. Then at the very end of the tour, we added Face Your Fear and Hypnotize Yourself. So those four will definitely be in the set. And we're probably going to add um, another song or two. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. And just very quickly, tell me a little bit about yourself and your guitar journey. So every time I see you these days, you tend to have a Les Paul on your hand. Is that is that your sort of favorite weapon of choice of the, at the moment? Yeah, it's it's not just because of how they sound and play, but it's because it's just like I'm looking at it right now. I have a, a guitar that's sitting in my living room that is so almost it's almost identical to my first nice guitar that I got when I was a kid, which was a gold top Les Paul deluxe from it was 1973 deluxe. And, um, I just, I, I love that guitar and, and for so many years. And then I started to get away from Les Paul's. I started, I, I got a strat at one point and started getting into super strats at a point. Then I went back to regular strats. And then when I was working with Ronnie, Actually, prior to that, I started, I would always record with Les Pauls because they just had the sound. But mm. um, when when I got with Ronnie, we were using a Les Paul and a, and a Strat basically doubled to get the sound on Killing the Dragon. And and then live, I would use the Super Strat for the Dio stuff. And I, if we did a Sabbath song, I would use the Les Paul because it's just this black custom I had is just crazy, heavy sounding. And, and, when Coverdale saw that, he goes, man, I love that you're using the Les Paul because I've, there's no sound like it. I go, yeah, you're right. And so he basically got me back in full time doing Les Pauls. Yeah, yeah. They said there's more of a, is it like a mid-range bark comes out of the Les Paul? Yeah, mid-range. You can, I mean, depending on how you set your amp and stuff, you can get some, a lot of different sounds. You can get a, a top end sound. If you got a, a Les Paul with a P90 pickup, you can get a, a really great, bright sound and then you can roll it off on the tone if it's too much you know, or you want to go darker yeah like leslie west used to use it les paul jr one p90 and he got a fat sound but then he could also you know make it scream as well yeah but yeah. um i yeah so the gold top les paul is my favorite les paul yeah it's it's a classic looking guitar timeless really isn't it it just, yeah, it's timeless and it feels right. It's the first color they came out with. And the funny story is, is that when I, my sister's boyfriend owned the Les Paul, I had a sunburst copy of a Les Paul. It was my first electric. And um, it, I thought it was called a gold top. I didn't know it was called a sunburst. And uh, so my, my sister's boyfriend said, I got a gold top at home. I'm going to sell it. And I saved up about half the money. It was like for total price, it was $300, $300, 300 US. So I saved up about half of that. And then I loaned the rest from my parents and told them I'd pay it off, um, which I don't know if I did or not, but hopefully <laughs> I did. Yeah. And, and when I opened the case, I was like, what's this? What color is this? He goes, it's a gold top. I go, no, I thought a gold top was like what Jimmy Page used, like that, my copy guitar. He goes, no, 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 this is a gold top. That's called a sunburst. I, go, oh, I said, okay. I looked at it. I was like, it still says Gibson, so I'm in. And I took it. And I really didn't like the color much. But it turned out that it's my favorite color, Les Paul of all time. Yeah, yeah. There is something beautiful about a nice gold top. It's just something about it. I have a, a gold top uh, PRS. And when I, nice. when, I first, when I first got it, it it was a, like a dull vintage gold, and I think when I saw it in the pictures, it always looked a lot more sparkly, a lot more metallic. But it, it, mm -hmm. there's something really magical about the color, you know, just as yeah. it's a sort of timeless classic, really, you know. Absolutely, that's a great guitar you got. Yeah. That's really well, cool, Doug. The pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for your time tonight. It's an absolute pleasure. Uh, really looking Likewise. forward to seeing you guys on the on the UK and Irish tour. So just a reminder for everybody, the guys do hit the UK December 3rd, starting off at Nottingham Rock City. So make sure you check out the tickets at ticketmaster.co.uk and ticketmaster.ie for availability. Doug, thank you once again, sir. And hopefully we'll see you soon in the UK. Yeah, Mark, thanks to you and everyone from Rock uh, Rock and Load. And um, we will we'll definitely be looking forward to to uh, some nice some nice Guinness. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Take your time and enjoy every single one you can get.
Yeah. All right. Okay, Thank bro. you, man. Take care. You Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.